Grim, what's up? Did you come to share something else you found in that book? Not quite. I'm afraid the malevolence has grown too dense for me to hole up at the inn reading. Malevolence? <laughs> the hell? What's that coming out of their bodies? Malevolence. They're all hitting their limits. Demon Blight! Even the Inn Girl! Why is this happening? They're demons now. Their malevolence is spilling over. The malevolence. All of that energy spilling from their bodies. That's what causes the demon blight? Do you know what demon blight really is? What demons are? They couldn't have gotten far! Track them down at all costs! We'll talk later. The exorcists are going to have their hands full with these demons. Let's get back to the ship while we can. hours.
my mom. Kamoana, your mother is still far away. Then I need to wait for her at home. Let's go back to Haria. Scary demons are running through the village. It's too dangerous there now. But I want to see my mom. Your mom would be sad if you got hurt by a demon. Come with us, and we'll keep you safe until she comes back. Okay, I'll go with you. All right. You're going to tell me about the demon blight and malevolence. Are you seriously thinking of breaking the Moloch taboo? That depends. Moloch taboo? This is about more than just the demons. You could say it's the truth behind how this world really works. The knowledge can be devastating to humans, throwing into question everything they think they know. And so the Malachim agreed to withhold it from humans, for their own protection. Do you still want to know? It's not like I'm a human anymore. I can't keep lying to myself. I can't go on unless I know the truth. You asked for it. First of all, this thing, this illness you call Demon Blight, does not exist. Any human carries the potential of becoming a demon. All it takes is for the malevolence lurking in their heart to overflow. And what exactly is this malevolence? Impure emotions beyond what reason can suppress. Think of it as the sin buried in men's souls. So you knew. I'm a witch. So malevolence is the darkness in all our hearts. Make any sense to you guys? Any at all? When you put it like that, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. <laughs> by nature, humans are incited by negative energy. It is easy to turn them towards impurity, creating malevolence. In fact, most people are constantly generating malevolence. It might even be possible that demons are people's true selves, and what little reason they possess is all that keeps them in human form. If the masses realized this, the realm would be thrown into utter chaos. That's why the Abbey propagates the lie of demon light. So I presume. That can't be true! You know yourselves there weren't any demons before the opening! It used to be that humans couldn't see demons, or Malachim. Not unless they possessed a unique spiritual talent we call resonance. All your average human would see was someone turning extremely violent. Unable to explain what was happening, they'd just call those people possessed or feral. Then what made people see them all of a sudden? I don't know. My guess would be that something triggered greater resonance among all of humanity. And then, on the day of the advent, all humans gained the ability to perceive Malachim. And in the following days, the exorcist numbers swelled. This has to be Artorius's doing. But if there's no sickness, why would an entire village turn into demons at the same time? Eight-headed is the lord of the land with seven mouths to devour malevolence. Humans produce malevolence, which Therians consume and transmit to a Nominat. But when we removed Kamawana from the Earth Pulse point... Clever boy. That's right. With no Therian to absorb their malevolence, the villagers could no longer contain it. So you're saying it's all my fault?
What's going on? You all look so sad. It's scaring me. On the other hand, at least now we know we can trust the contents of that ancient book. We tear the Therians away from their Earth Pulse points. Inominat's power will wane, and will prevent this awakening. But if we take away the Therians, then more and more humans will turn into demons. It's the only way to kill Artorius. Ooh, the knives come out. So even the truth won't stop you. Very well. Since each Therian looks different, we'll only find them by capturing the Earth Pulse points one by one. What separates humans and demons? Um... Uh... That's Eleanor. Ch cheer up, Eleanor. Your mommy's looking over you too, you know. So she is. Thank you, Kamoana. Grimoire, I want you to tell me more about what you said earlier. About malevolence? I told you, the subject is taboo. I understand that human emotions create a poison called malevolence that turns people into demons. Is there no way to stop malevolence from being created? As long as humans remain human, no. But your kind must have found a way around it. But Malakim do not produce malevolence, unlike humans. That's a lie. I've watched a Malak turn into a demon. That only happens when we are exposed to too much external malevolence. <laughs> True. The island was full of prisoners and demons. And Melchior hit that Malak with something that turned it into a wyvern. Was it malevolence? To Malachi, malevolence is a powerful toxin. We seek those of purity to serve as vessels to protect us from it. It is not a perfect solution, however. If the vessel is corrupted, the Malak is as well. That is correct. So if Eleanor turns into a demon, then Lafayette... That must be what Aizen meant when he said he'd hate to see Lafayette's vessel broken. A small crack in one's soul is often all it takes to break a person apart. So try not to pick on our squeaky clean exorcist too much, hmm? Thanks for the warning. Sir. We just received a Sylph Jay from the boss of the Bloodwings. She has a job for it. Let's do it. This Good point. And the Bloodwings might know something about the other Therians, too. We're heading for Logris. Ready anytime! I lost my mother to a demon. Yet that girl's a Therian. I... I don't even know what I want anymore. Hey! That's pretty! You like to look at that thing, don't you? Yes. My mother... Someone very important to me gave me this. I treasure it a lot. Looking at it gives me strength. Do you want to see it? Yeah! Ah! What's wrong? My face! It's... it's scary! I don't want to look like that! I don't want my mommy to hate me! Mommy! <laughs> Mommy! When I 
was her age. That's just how I cried. Come, Alana. I want you to see this. That huge owie! What happened? It's big and ugly, isn't it? There are scary things about my body, too. But... Do you think I'm scary, Kamalana? No, not at all. But are you alright? Does that hurt? Thanks, sweetie. I'm alright, I promise. What about me? Do you think I'm scary? You're such a sweetheart, Kamalana. Nobody could ever be scared of you. Not me, not your mother, not Lafisette. You don't have to cry anymore. It'll be okay. I promise. Okay. That scar, was it from a demon? Yeah. They attacked my village when I was a girl. I was so hurt, I couldn't move. But my mother lured them away from me so I could survive. What happened to her? The last thing she said to me was, Stay strong and keep living. Oh. Come to the deck. Grimoire says she's learned something from the book. Hey, why is your face so red? It's nothing. Somehow I doubt that. It's nothing, I, I swear. Do you all remember the second verse of that song Lafisette read earlier? Four Empyreans may tear him asunder, but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therian shall be forever reborn in sight of the full crimson moon. Right. That's what I've gathered you all here to discuss. And we think that passage means that Inominach and the Therians will be revived by a chosen one, right? Yes, but the shall be forever reborn part kept bothering me. I've reconsidered my analysis. Suppose that instead of someone being chosen by Inominat to create Therians, the song means that Inominat chooses who becomes Therians. <sighs> but so long as there is one receptive to divine power, Therians shall be forever reborn. What do you think that could mean? That someone receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as a Therian. Like Kamoana! Which is to say that the Abbey figured out how to turn people into Therians, and then got right to work. That's... Are you really that surprised? Artorius has always been one to prioritize the many over the individual, as I well know. Another thing to consider is this wording about Therians being forever reborn. This could mean that one Therian will be reborn again and again. Or it could mean that different Therians will be born to take their place. Meaning that even if you kill one, there are more waiting in line. They can't be wiped out. Looks like prioritizing the one over the many was the right call this time, eh, Velvet? I never said I wouldn't kill her, if it would prevent Inominat's reawakening. But Therians can't be killed. Not truly. Hmm... So, in a nutshell, if you kill one, Another person who's receptive to Inominat's power will be reborn as one. Right. But the song says that seven mouths feed the body. So there's only so many around. If you don't kill them, the next ones won't be born. Exactly. So we remove the seven Therians from their Earth Pulse points instead. But then, we also have to protect them so the Abbey doesn't steal them back. Or kill them. Sounds tricky. We've got to protect my bug, too. Yeah, you take real good care of that thing now, got it? You bet I will! In that case, we should probably work on securing a proper hideout for ourselves. You got a secret base or anything, Aizen? It's every man's fantasy, but sadly, I don't. We need a hard-to-find spot. One where we can guarantee a steady supply of malevolence for the Therians. Hmm, somewhere devoid of people but full of malevolence. Real poser you got there. With the Abbey in control of the entire continent, 
Finding a place like that will be easier said than done. Meanwhile, Inominat's reawakening draws ever closer. We'll have to keep collecting Artharians while we search for a hideout. For now, let's just get to Logris. water and food you got. Wait your turn, moron. I was drifting out at sea for three days. Almost died out there. We're here. Poor you. You probably deserved it. Say that again, wise ass. I dare you. Ah, uh, shut up, both of you. No one's getting anything until you pay me what you owe first. Uh, are they gonna be okay? Don't pay them any mind. Sailors are just a short-tempered bunch, that's all. Huh? The hell are you doing? What's going on? They've jacked up the price to dock our ship here. Oh yeah? Some real balls you've got there, buddy. If you lot want to moor here, that's the price you're gonna pay. Look, pirates are a liability to begin with, but calling your crew infamous these days would be putting it lightly. The more wanted you are, the more it's gonna cost to hide you, capiche? Hard to argue there. Benwick, just pay the man what he wants. Uh, yes, sir. You're such pushovers. You and the captain both. I knew I could count on you to come through, Eisen. Pleasure doing business with you. Looks like I'm causing you trouble. It comes with the job. Don't sweat it. Some sailors just have longer tempers than others. <laughs> Noted. a kiddo who's spying at my bewitching waist. Oh, sorry. I just couldn't help it. What are those books, anyway? Oh, that's a great question. Since you asked, I'll reveal the secrets of my tomes just for you. On the right, I've got my household ledger in the back and my magic encyclopedia in the front. That one I mostly use for oil blotting paper. What's oil blotting paper? It's a girl thing. The two on the left are my heavy book, which I use for flower pressings, and then my super pop-up book. A super pop-up book? When you open it, it pops out with the force of a raging river! When an enemy has me cornered, I can just open it up facing a nearby wall and pop! Instant getaway! The only downside is that it's a real pain to try to get closed again, so I haven't used it in years. What about the book right in front? That's actually Lair Cake. Whoa, really? Seared into its batter are precious bits of knowledge. Wow! I had no idea that was possible! He's taking this so seriously, I almost feel bad. All of your books are so interesting, Moggy Lou! That's really cool! There's no end to your curiosity, is there? What do you say? Wanna take a closer look? Boy, would I! If you really do, then say, Moggy Lou, I want to get to know you better. Moggy Lou? I want to get to know you better. All right, I accept. I'll reveal to you my most private secrets. Wow, so that's what's on the other side of these books. I wouldn't have ever guessed that. 
What the? What are you doing with Luffy Set? He said he wanted to see, so I'm showing him. It's my job to protect him as his vessel, especially from someone so wicked as yourself. Also, what you're doing runs contrary to public decency. Witches aren't supposed to be decent. These bindings with the locks on them. This style used to be really popular during the Meliodas dynasty. Now that I know you're such a bad influence for him, I'll be keeping a closer eye on you. If you can't learn to take it easy, nobody's ever gonna want to marry you, you know. Like you're a shining example of marriage material yourself. Hey, Mogilu, could you turn them over one more time? I want to see how the book's attached to your belt. Yeah, sure. <sighs> It was a lot tougher to get in the first time. More funny than tough, if you ask me. Oh, you mean Velvet's little dove act? Coo coo! I'd be careful teasing her if I were you. You know how she can get. Oh, don't act like you didn't enjoy it too. I'm sure you did, right? Good little boys don't lie to adults, you know. I might have. Just a little... Say it like a dove. It was funny. Coo, coo. 